Hey everyone, this week I'm so excited to start making the first of many cute little animals using polymer clay. About a few weeks ago, me and my friend went on a hike by an old canal and we saw these teeny tiny baby turtles and I figured it would just be the perfect thing to start off my animal collection with. I definitely wanted to start this project off with a sketch, that way I didn't go into making this little turtle blind. And while I sketched, I began to realize I could go about this project using three main sections. It seemed like I would basically need to make the main shell, a little oval head, and then these rounded sort of rectangles for the legs and feet. I also really tried to focus on figuring out the shell pattern during the sketch. I figured that this was going to be one of the most complex parts of this sculpture. I also tried to break this down, where I sketched a large oval at the top of the shell, and then below that, I created these pentagon shapes that circled the entirety of the shell. And by making these pentagon shapes, these little triangles sort of formed themselves at the base of the shell. From there, I sketched out a quick happy face and went straight into sculpting. So as I had just mentioned before, I broke this guy up into those three sections I was talking about. I built up four rounded rectangles for the legs out of tin foil, a sort of half oval for the shell, and then a circle for the head. All of these then needed to be covered in clay and smoothed out. I used my fingers and clay softener for the bulk of the smoothing, but I also went in with some silicone shaper tools for the smaller areas. And once all the pieces to this turtle puzzle were smoothed out and looking good, I could start on some of the detail work. I began with the little turtle toes, and to do this, I took my silicone shaper tool and pressed out where each toenail would be. I made sure to build up the indent, if that makes any sense, <laughs> over time. That way, I didn't ruin the shape of the leg. And I did four toes on each turtle foot. The head was also very simple. All I did was press out two indents for the eyes using my dotting tool, and I rolled up two circles to plop in there for the eyes themselves. I also made sure to add some bacon bond to act as a glue once the clay was baked, that way they didn't pop out. And I can't forget about the turtle's tiny smile. Now, the shell was probably the most complicated part of the sculpture. I went in at first with my silicone shaper tool to try and begin to carve out the pattern of the shell, but it was just too flimsy and wasn't giving me the outline that I wanted, so I went back in with a small dotting tool and kind of sketched out the lines of the shell pattern. Like I had done in the sketch, I started with the top oval, which took a few tries to get centered, and then I went all around the sides of the shell and did those pentagon shapes, the whole time trying to eyeball them and keep them roughly the same size. And as you can see, if you do it right, it automatically creates that bottom triangle pattern that goes around the base of the shell. When the first, I guess, sketch of the pattern was done on the shell, that's when I went back in with my silicone shaper tool and smoothed out the indentations. And by doing that, I also pressed them in deeper, trying to bring out the individual plates of the shell. Once the pattern was done, it was time to start putting together all of the pieces. So at first, I wanted to be able to just stick them together using pieces of armature wire, but I quickly learned that I didn't have enough clay built up around the little legs, and I couldn't jam the wire into the foil underneath. So I had to improvise, and I put a small blob of clay on the top of each leg and added some bacon bond, hoping it would be enough to stick to the shell. And luckily for me, it was. I went and I did this for each leg, and for the head I did a combination of both methods. I was able to get the wire into the head with the help of a little extra clay, and I stuck the other half of the wire straight into the shell. I also went around the head and each leg with a small bit of clay, just as an added precaution, hoping that it would be enough to keep them from falling off in the oven. And guess what? It was. So after that first bake, I went in with the last part of the detail work, which really was just adding that rim that you see around a turtle shell, and I also put on the little tail. Then, now that the turtle is starting to come together, it went back into the oven for the final bake, and I began the painting process. To start, I always put on a base coat of primer, and this helps the paint stick and to keep the colors vibrant. I did a few layers of this, and then I went into actually painting. 
I decide to go with this pretty blue-green color. I want to call it almost a deep turquoise or peacock blue, but it took a few layers to really build up that rich dark color. I then went in with just a darker version of that turquoise between each of the shell plates to help create separation and make each part stand out. The color of the actual turtle took a few tries because I wanted to find a shade that would complement that unique turquoise really well. I started with this almost pistachio green and I quickly realized it was too bright, so I added a bit of white to get more of a mint green, and I thought this shade worked so much better. I covered the whole body and the belly with this, and once that was layered up, I moved back to the rim of the shell. This again gave me a bit of trouble when it came to trying to figure out what color I wanted it to be. At first, I tried to go with a brown and instantly knew it just didn't match the color palette at all. So then I tried a more emerald or foresty green and that didn't feel right either. So finally, I just went with the darkened turquoise that I had used between the plates of the shell and was really happy with that. Sometimes doing a limited color palette is just the way to go. I also used that darkened turquoise for the little toes and had to build up a few layers for them. But with that, I felt like the base layer of all the colors was finished, so it was time to move on to the details. I decided I wanted to add these cute spots on different parts of the turtles to kind of add texture and variation to that flat minty color. I went in with the same turquoise from the shell color, still trying to keep that limited color palette, and use a small brush to make three tiny dots on the front legs, and I also added some to the top of the head. I actually really liked how these came out, and I think it adds just the right amount of character to our turtle friend. It honestly might be my favorite part of this guy. Last step was painting the face, and I painted the face like I do with most of my other faces. I started with the eyes and did a few layers of black over those. Then I went in with my dotting tool to add a small white highlight to each one. But for some reason, I didn't feel like one highlight was enough. So I went in with another teeny highlight just underneath the first. Once the eyes were all set, I went in with a pretty pink color to add blush to the cheeks. And with that, our cute turtle is complete. The fact that this guy is the one starting off my animal friend collection makes me so happy. I think he's really, really cute, and I am so happy with how he turned out. I don't think I'd change a thing about him, and I hope you guys enjoyed and feel the same way. Stay tuned for whatever is next to come.